there, my name is Joanne Hasty, and I am a artist who uses a robotic arm in my fine art painting practice. And I'm sharing these videos of how I'm developing my code. I'm a self-taught Python programmer and each week I do a new painting and I keep updating the code, trying new things. And this week I wanted to show you this painting. Now you'll notice it's extra shiny because I have just put an isolation coat on it and I will shortly put a link to that video. That's actually in the next video I talk about isolation coats and varnish coats. So that's what you do after on the painting. But in this video I just want to talk about this painting and how it was created. This painting, I think it's the first time that I did a painting in three sittings. So that was interesting because one of the challenges with my current setup is the robot is attached to a steel table in the back and then I have this wobbly Ikea table in the front. So in fact my positions keep changing and one of the things I decided to do early on in this project is I would paint alongside the robot and what that allows me to do is I can move things around on the table and keep tweaking things. It's not press play and leave the room and leave the robot. So it's a semi-autonomous process. So with this painting, I did it in three goes. The big, there were two new pieces of code in here, but I have some good news and a, some bad news. So the good news is the new code that I was working on that I actually wanted, I actually filmed myself talking about last time, but there were too many bugs in it. So I took that part out. So that code actually works. But the bad news is, before it got started working, this robot went to the wrong spots and I've been wanting to film some robot fails. And just as I had filmed the robot doing these wrong things, going to the wrong position, my Surface crashed. And I'm right now filming this on a webcam with my Surface, so that video became corrupt. So there was some fun robot mistakes, but I still haven't gotten it on camera and I decided not to recreate it because I had already fixed those bugs by then. So the two pieces of code, one piece you'll start noticing over time, but in past videos, what ended up happening was you'd see me with a hair dryer drying sections of paint before the robot could paint there again. So the robot would paint a section, I would paint over top, then I'd spend time blow drying it, and then the robot would then paint the next thing because the next shape would go on top of the previous shape. So now in my creation code, I fixed that. So whenever it places it sh a shape, it makes sure that the next shape um, is not in that area. And if I can, I'll try to cut here to show you some of that code. But basically what the code is doing is it has the previous shape on an image that's the same size and it shows the shape and then it has a image with the new shape and it goes through every pixel in those two pictures and if there's a non-zero pixel in both images it knows it's overlapping and it'll try to place a shape again. So it's this iterative process with an if statement checking if the pixels are the same and a loop looping through over and over again trying to place a shape. So it takes a little bit longer but on the bright side the actual painting part is a little more efficient because I was thinking about it one of my goals with these paintings is to have it semi-autonomous so now when it paints a shape I can go fix up that shape and dry that shape while the robots painting the next shape so we're working together and working simultaneously and hopefully that means that we're also working more efficiently and faster which at the end of the day is why we try to program this stuff so that was exciting that worked and hopefully I'll be able to show you some code. I'm still learning all this YouTube stuff and filming, so bear with me. The other piece of code that was interesting was I've been thinking about how the robot places a circle. And you can probably see it because this is shiny. But see that circle there? So the way the robot places a circle is it starts in the middle and it goes out. And that's actually how I paint. I start in the middle of a shape and I'm a little bit loose, but then as I go out, I'm pushing the edge of the paint outwards and outwards. And that's actually how you get that ripple is the you're pushing the paint out to the edge. And because you're pushing 
an amount of paint rather than just dry brushing, it actually makes a nice smooth edge. And if you've watched how the robot paint places a rectangle, it goes all of the horizontal stripes and then all of the vertical stripes. The problem with that is that's not how I paint because I don't want to go back into an amount of paint that's drying and that's exactly what it's doing. It's crossing over and it's breaking up some of those nice edges that it created with the previous edges. I hope that makes sense. But basically I'd rather it pushing outward as opposed to crossing over wet paint. What I did was I was thinking about how could I start in the middle, we're going to use this rectangle as an example. So how could I start in the middle of the rectangle and then move outwards? And that's exactly what it does. So I needed to calculate where the center point of a rectangle is and it actually starts, if you think about this, I have it draw a line and then spiral outwards. So how would I figure out what that point or that point is offset? because it first has to do a line and then build out. And it's actually that point is you take the width, divide it by two and push it down. And then that becomes, and then the, that's the length. So the length of the first line is actually the height minus the width, because you have half a width and half a width. And then it starts going out from there. So it was a bit of a, a mental tongue twister, but I enjoy doing those, otherwise I would definitely not be painting with a robotic arm. The So you'll see there's one, two, I think there's about four or five rectangles in this piece. So this was a good piece to show you how the rectangles are done. And you will see that there is a lot more coverage with the paint. So I'm really happy how they turned out. The next step is, I think I can only see this shape here, but this for this quadrilateral shape, I now need to do that. And another reason I really wanted to do a spiral type shape is because, actually that's a good point before I go there. And in order to make straight corners, I have the brush lift. But if you leave the brush on the page while it's doing a corner, you'll actually round the edges. I'll need to play with that a little more to show you, but I'm hoping to be able to do more organic shapes. So say I just want to organic shape in the middle that and all I need to do is now define the points define the center in essence all I have to do is find the center and then start drawing it outwards and move to the outward point so it's it's a, still a little bit, bit more complicated than a rectangle and that's why I haven't done this quadrilateral yet and that's what you're seeing in these videos is that incremental improvement of painting with a robotic arm I think that's all I wanted to say about this process. I'm going to talk over a sped up version of me painting with this so you can see some of the nuances. The other thing, or there ended up being three typos in the rectangle. One was, and I wrote them down one second. So one was the center point, and actually I wanted to make that point. So I had the variable for the center of a rectangle called center point X and center point Y not realizing that the robot also has a variable called center point X and center point Y that calculates the entire painting. And so every time the robot goes to dips in paint or it dips in the, the water to wash the brush, it goes to the bottom of the painting. And that position is called center point X and then it's an offset of center point Y. And that's where the joints reset. And I'll be talking about the need for the joint resetting in a video coming up shortly. Once it's posted, I'll add the link to this, but now when it went to paint, that rectangle replaced the variable that never moves of the painting setup. And instead of going to this calculated center point X, it went off into the distance to, to that new X center point Y position that had nothing to do with the robot co coordinates and all everything to do with the rectangle coordinates. And so that was the typo that caused the robot to make a mistake that almost spilt the water and spilt some paint that was off on the side. And unfortunately, I didn't get on film, but it was quite epic. And fortunately, it was only an issue with the XY location because you've seen in the past in other videos, where when it's a mistake in the Z direction, sometimes the brush gets broken and I can post that video somewhere around me right now as well. 
So I digress. Obviously you can see it takes a lot of time and I get excited about painting with a robot. And I'm glad I get to document the, the stories of what happens because when you're programming, wh whether you're programming or making art, you're constantly thinking about the next painting, the next challenge. I find I'm rare, personally, I'm rarely pausing to think about what I did. So these videos are great where I actually sit down and think about some of the, the challenges that I have to work through. And one of the challenges in the, for, the, for these videos is I do want to share the code, at least specifically the snippet of code that I'm working on. So hopefully I will start being able to do that. But in the meantime, here is a sped up version of this week's painting. So at the beginning here, you will see one of the remaining typos. You're going to see the robot arm tap at the bottom there. And that was actually two other typos. One was I didn't put equals equals in, and that's when you're doing an if statement. And then the other one was I had a typo on the spelling of direction. But once I caught those two mistakes, the robot started painting a rectangle. So here it is going around and around. So I'm just adding some more layers of paint. So now you can see that the next rectangle it is painting is not touching the first rectangle. I will have to go back and check the code because that yellow rectangle is touching the pink shape, but not by much. So the green is the background. I paint that in. I guess I could write some code that just paints the, the green area that ends up showing up. That's an interesting thought that I just had right now, but we'll leave that to another video. So here it's painting a circle, and this is what I mentioned before, where the circles start in the middle, and they slowly push that edge of paint around and around. Now you'll notice I didn't touch up all of that yellow rectangle because I can see what the painting's going to look like in the future and I know very little of that rectangle will actually be visible so I didn't spend too much time fixing it up. Walter came to watch the robot with me. This is the fifth rectangle you're seeing being painted. That orange wasn't fully dry, so the orange is, or the pink brush is pulling orange into the rectangle, but that's okay because I paint with the robot and I will fix that up. And here's that big blue, light blue rectangle that I was doing most of my talking about.
So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it interesting how this painting was created. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button so you can be alerted when new videos come up. Please hit the like button. All of those things help my art practice build credibility as well as help you to get me more visibility for this, which hopefully leads to just more projects and more sales and inevitably more art and more robots. So thank you so much and have a great week. Bye now.